Hello friends, let us continue our lecture today on mitral stenosis, mitral regurgitation. In our last class, we have learned about the pathophysiology of mitral regurgitation. Now let us learn about the clinical features of mitral regurgitation. So in mitral regurgitation, uh, in the, uh, generally there is uh, the... In mild cases, there is only backflow of blood from the left ventricle to the left atrium. Uh, so, as a result, this uh, mild, in mild cases, the backflow of left atrium to left ventricle is sorry, left ventricle to left atrium. This is compensated by the hypertrophy, hyperplasia, and hypertrophy of the left atrium and left ventricle, thus, com thus, com thus increasing pressures. Uh, in the left atrium and left ventricle, thus it compensates it. So, so there won't be much clinical features unless and until uh, it has been severe. So, if it's mild, there will not be much clinical features. If it's moderate, sometimes it can be accompanied by some arrhythmias which will lead to palpitations. Okay, only and only if it is associated with some arrhythmia, then there will be palpitations. Okay, uh, or else it's asymptomatic most of the cases and when it is severe then what happens if it is severe in our last class i have said that there is a chance of pulmonary hypertension in severe cases because of back back or increased in pressure of uh, in the left atria and then pulmonary arteries and then pulmonary alveoli resulting in pulmonary hypertension in such cases you can see the symptoms in such cases you can see fatigue you can see dyspnea which is first initially on exertional and then this may, uh, you know, this may uh, progress to orthopnea or sometimes it may even progress to PND because uh, in the end stages, okay, that occurs in severe cases. Uh, if the disease is so severe that there is even backflow from the pul back pressure from the pulmonary hypertension, this back pressure is in the pulmonary veins and then there is increased back pressure in the right ventricle and there is also increased back pressure in the right atria in such cases there can be right heart failure so whenever in very severe cases with right heart failure in such cases there can be ascites or hepatomegaly or distended neck veins okay like uh, features of uh, left heart failure sorry right heart failure can be seen Okay, so these are the symptoms which we see. This occurs only and only in very, very severe cases. But in normal cases, this is asymptomatic. In some cases, there can be palpitations. Don't forget about the palpitations. The patient can come to us with palpitations. Okay, now, uh, what do you see on examination? On examination, first and foremost, it's a cardiac case. So, we have to look for jugular venous pressure so jugular venous pressure whenever there is mitral regurgitation it gets elevated jvp gets uh, it can be normal or it can be elevated too but most of the cases in severe cases it is elevated or it or else it is quite normal so just a minute let me take a pen yeah so jvp it is elevated in severe cases Okay, it can also be normal also. Okay, this is one thing which we see. And if there is right heart failure, then you can see ascites, you can also see hepatomegaly, and then you can see pulmonary, you, uh, you can see pedal edema. These can be seen whenever there is right heart failure, that is if it is so severe. Or else, if you see, uh, if then if you go to the systemic examination on inspection, uh, you can, if you can, if the person is so lean, you can find apex beat. This apex beat can be, uh, this apex beat, uh, it, it is, uh, uh, it has uh, um, displaced downwards and left because the, this is the no, normal person. Here the ventricle, uh, the apex beat coincides with the, or corresponds with the left ventricular dilatation, left ventricular contraction. So uh, normally it's, uh, in the fifth intercostal space, that is left side, left fifth intercostal space, half inch medial to mid clavicular line. But here, because there is left atrial uh, dilatation and hypertrophy, so because of that, the um, apex beat is, shift is shifted downwards and laterally. That is one finding which is important, that is apex beat. So apex beat is shifted downwards and laterally. This is one important finding. And then, 
sometimes at the apex you can also find out systolic thrill on oscar on uh, palpation you can find the systolic thrill why because the apex beat which is here is hyperdynamic apex beat because of that blood flow okay so this can lead to sometimes a systolic thrill and systolic thrill can also be due to one more thing that is s3 as i have said there is s3 heart sound which is the third heart sound which is which is felt this s3 can be felt as a systolic thrill okay so this is what we see on palpation then what do we see on uh, auscultation yeah on auscultation if you see uh, first uh, i have already drawn the auscultatory findings yeah first there will be a uh, murmur you see holosystolic murmur why this is because of in the systole the blood regurgitates from the ventricle to the atria so there is holosystolic murmur and and one more thing because the uh, left ventricle has higher has uh, uh, more amount of blood so this large amount of blood it takes uh, so because of this large amount of blood there is increased pressure so because of this increased pressure uh, the contraction of left ventricle is faster than the right ventricle so as a result the s2 it may split into a2 and p2 and there might be gap between the splitting so this is wide split s2 may be seen okay and then uh, then the blood from the left atria also increases the volume of blood also increases because it is receiving blood from the left ventricle and also from the pulmonary um, veins as a result the blood in the left atria also increases so normally here in diastole the blood flow from the left atria to left ventricle occurs and normally in the first in the first rapid filling phase it is uh, passive uh, it occurs just due to the normal pressure difference and then there is diastasis where th there is very little amount of blood which enters from left uh, atrium to left ventricle and then there is second rapid filling phase where the atria contracts at once and it will send blood from left atria to ven left ventricle because there is large amount of blood in the left atria atrium which is left for the second rapid die filling phase in such cases the atria has to contract with higher pressure and it has to uh, and large amount of blood has to flow through this mitral valve that will create a murmur which is late diastolic murmur so you have seen uh, one mid -di mid systolic sorry uh, pan systolic murmur or holo systolic murmur is seen and a diastolic murmur is seen that is late diastolic murmur and you have seen the splitting of the heart sounds can be seen and sometimes uh, because of the sudden tensing of the uh, uh, papillary muscles and cauda tendine you can also see s3 heart sound okay this s3 heart sound is somewhere seen in the diastole here okay this s3 is most commonly followed by the diastolic rumble okay so these are the different auscultatory findings which we see in uh, mitral regurgitation now what are you what are we going to uh, how how are we going to in investigate the person the first investigation is electrocardiogram in electrocardiogram that is ecg you see the following findings first if you see there is uh, increased uh, hypertrophy of the left atria so because of the hypertrophy of left atria there is bifid p wave right because the right atria it is normal but left atria is hypertrophied so as a result it contracts with higher intensity so there is bifid p wave that is one thing which we see okay the second thing is there is hypertrophy of the left atria and also left ventricle even the left ventricle is also hypertrophied so because of the hypertrophy of left ventricle you see because of this this is because of hypertrophy of left atria because of hypertrophy of left ventricle you have two findings one in the right sided leads and other in the left sided leads in the right sided leads then in that we see Uh, p mm q r d p s waves are seen 
in the right sided wells t is normal okay deep s waves are seen in right sided leads that is in v1 okay and in left sided leads uh you will see tall r waves tall r waves are seen in the left sided wells that is v5 and v6 okay so these are the findings which we see in um ecg so on ecg you see um bifid p wave because of atrial dilatation and because of ventricular dilatation on on v1 you see a uh, deep s waves and on v5 and v6 that is left sided leads you see uh tall t tall r waves this is r wave so there is tall r waves are seen so these are seen in on ecg so what are you going to see on echocardiography echocardiography you will see the following findings one you will see the uh, dilatation of the right atria right vent sorry left atrium and left ventricular dilatation can be seen you can also see the increased pulmonary pressure pulmonary artery pressure can be seen uh, and sometimes you can also see the decreased ejection fraction so these can be seen and on chest x ray you can only see only one finding that is enlarged or large heart okay uh, so chest x ray is not at all diagnostic it is uh, it does not help us in any way so ecg and echocardiograph uh, echocardiography help us to find out and there is one more investigation which can be done one is doppler imaging so in the doppler imaging you can uh, um uh doppler in the doppler imaging we can find out the uh mr uh, you know the width of the mitral valve and how the pressure you know how the blood transmits with what pressure what velocity can be known by doppler imaging so these are the investigations which we can do for pulmonary regurgitation so how are we going to manage it so there are two management one medical therapy and the other surgical therapy so in the medical therapy here the patient develops right heart failure so first and foremost you will have to treat this right heart failure so the right heart failure should be treated so how are we going to treat the right heart failure this is treated mainly by diuretics and ace inhibitors so ace inhibitors and diuretics are used for treating right heart failure whenever the patient suffers from palpitations then you can give beta blockers if the patient suffers from palpitations if the mitral valve uh, mitral regurgitation is very severe then you can do mitral valve replacement therapy okay mitral valve replacement therapy or mitral valve repair percutaneous mitral valve repair can be done only and only if it is so severe and if there is pulmonary hypertension then we can do in some time the mo the most common complication of this mitral uh, regurgitation is atrial fibrillation most of the patients suffer from atrial fibrillation so these are the different clinical features uh, investigations and treatment of mitral regurgitation in brief so thank you guys for watching my lecture please uh, subscribe the channel for new lectures thank you very much uh, for watching my lecture thank you